Hi, George here. And I occasionally do videos on YouTube about how to change the color of an object, maybe a jacket or these shoes, things like that. And normally I'm just changing it to something which looks nice to my eye. I'm not really caring about an exact color match, but I had a comment about that asking, how do you match a hex color? This is the kind of thing you may have to do sometimes as a small business, or maybe you have a side hustle or you're part of the gig economy and you need to have a matching color maybe for a logo or something, or possibly you're in real estate, you want to match a house color, things like that occasionally comes up. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. And we'll be matching this green color right here. Let me just bring this up, click on that. I'll go over here, open up the color picker. And here we go. And here we have several ways of describing the color. The top way is the HSB. This is the hue, saturation, and brightness with specific values. Or we have the RGB color values right in here. Or down below here, we have the hexadecimal color value or hex color value. Oftentimes these are used to identify a specific color. Sometimes it's a color that's used for logos, things like that. But this is good enough for our use in here. So here's the hex code color. This is that particular green that I chose. It's kind of an Irish green in there. Okay, let's now see the process on doing this. It's a little bit complicated to get this done exactly. And this is more of an art than a science. You'll have to do some careful judgment calls on exactly which way to set the adjustments, but I'll walk you through the process here. And then each image will be a little bit different. You'll have to adjust the technique to match the specific image. Okay, let's just start off with the brand new image. I'll go over here, file, and I have this one right here. There we go. I downloaded this from Pixabay. I'll put the link for that in the description if you want to use the same image here for practice. Now, the first thing we wanted to do is just to make a copy of our background layer. So right click where it says background and duplicate layer, choose OK, and then hide the background. In this case, this is a safety, but also be changing this image directly. So it's good to have a copy here just in case things get messed up. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to come in here and make a selection around the color part that we want to change and separate that out from the picture, basically making a layer mask on this. A little bit tricky here because of the soft edges back here. I'm not going to be paying that much attention to that, but you may want to, if you're doing this actual picture for a final, you may want to also soften up the edges on your layer mask. But again, not going to go that deep into this one. Lots of ways of doing this because of the complexity in here. I think I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool. Let's set this at a new selection. I'm going to feather it by just one pixel. So it's not really perfectly hard on the edge and zoom in pretty tight like that. And we'll just make a nice selection. So to start up here and with this tool, don't click too fast or it's going to collapse the selection. You have to start over again. That's never a fun time. Just like that. Back out of that. So the trick here is to give it a beat between each click and don't put your clicks too close together and you should be okay. Straight lines. You can go pretty far apart. If it's a curved line, you'll put your spots closer together. And then just slowly work around the image and to get the whole thing selected. And this will take me several minutes to do this. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second, finish off this selection, and then bring the video back up again as soon as the selection is done. That way you don't have to watch for this real boring process of coming here and making this very careful selection. But I do want to say that this is the most important part of this whole project. So it's worth taking your time to get a very good selection and use whatever selection tool you feel most comfortable with. Since we're doing this as a layer mask, we'll always be able to go back in and adjust the edges after we finish this. So you're not locked into anything. We're not using the eraser tool or anything. So the selection can be cleaned up and trimmed up as needed after it's initially made. If you get to an edge like this, just hold the space bar down, move your picture like that with the space bar and the mouse. Let go and then go back to finishing up making your selection. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll pause the video right now and then I'll bring it back up again once I have the selection made. Okay, here's our selection. We're still in this one layer, so just hit the layer mask button right there. We now have a layer mask for just those shoes in there and there's our layer mask. If I bring the background back up again, there's the rest of that image that's on that background layer. Okay, so far so good. The next thing we need to do is to remove all the color from this because our problem is the color. We want to have different colors. So we have to remove the color from this layer right here. And for that, I just like removing the saturation. Let's go over here and make sure you're on the image side of the layer, not the layer mask guy, but the image side. Look for that light blue outline. Go up here to enhance. And you can convert to black and white, but this also tends to change contrast, things like that. I don't want to be touching any of that. I just want to get rid of the color part of it. So 
go to adjust color and remove color. And there we go. It's now taken all the color out of that. Now I missed it a little bit right down over here. You can see a bit of the pink showing over here. We can fix that on the layer mask. Let's go to the layer mask side. I'll just zoom in a bit on this. And I can actually just paint this out. Take the paintbrush. I think that size is pretty good. Black hides, white shows. I want to show the layer mask part of this and not what's in behind. That's that color photograph in behind. So let's change this to white. And then I'll just come in here and paint on the layer mask in white right along where that pink edge is. There we go. And just kind of clean that pink edge out. Like I said before, it's easy to adjust this once we have it as a layer mask because you can always come in and adjust the layer mask. Now don't go too far on this. You want to stay away from that white area. So I'm just painting carefully right up along that edge and just painting where that pink is showing on that white. And that should be all that we need to do. Let's take a clear up around over to here. Make sure you don't go over the pants. That'll cause you more problems. And that fixes that. Okay, control zero to fit screen. So that was our second step. Now we need to color in here. So for that, I want a very specific color. So I'll go back over here to the sample one and I have my color right here. I'll just copy this hexadecimal code, right click and copy. That's my hex code that I want to use. Back over here again. So click on the color picker right here and then just paste in your hex code right down here. Right click and paste. There it is, same code, same green. So if you have the code, just paste it in right here. Choose OK. Let's now make a new layer above this layer right there. Take your paint bucket and just fill that layer with solid green. Let's now take this layer mask here, hold the Alt key down, drag that straight up. And that then gives us this color just inside of that layer mask. So just coloring the pink part of that image. Now we need to apply the color onto the layer underneath. So you see all the values in there. And for that, make sure you're on the green layer up here and you're on the green layer side. Click on the blend modes, come down to color. And that then passes this green color through onto the layer behind. Now, the only part that actually matches the color is right over here inside this back strap right there. That was fairly dark. Everything else was a lighter color. So we have our match color right here. It's an exact match, but I want to have everything else be a good match for this color. So we'll have to come in and do a bit of tweaking on this to make it work exactly. This is a bit more of an art than it is a specific science, but here's the technique for this. We need two adjustment layers in here on the green layer, go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. The first one I want is levels. Choose that checkbox right here, choose okay. And you see our values here are pretty small. Now the middle value here, this is going to make it more green or less green. And also we also get more saturation and less saturation. The default is one left side, we get a bit more green coming in, but also notice that we lose the saturation as I go further in. So I can do just a little bit of this. I'll bring it in a bit like that. Me down where that line is. Let me pull this one down a little bit, relatively decently, the white where it is. So it pushes it a little bit in the right direction, but it's not all the way, but don't worry, we will get there. Right now we're just getting the basic color onto this. We'll then take care of the values as a secondary step. Okay, let's adjust the saturation on this, just a tweak on the saturation. Go up here, layer, new adjustment layer, and hue saturation. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. I want it just a little less saturated, but not too much. Just knock a bit off of that. And we're just slowly moving in closer to the actual color. We're still real nice right in here. Look, we're almost exact right back there, so we're very close on that. We now need to do a, another trick to give us more adjustments on this to make it much darker. This needs to be a lot darker than it is. And that's the tricky part. I'm working in Photoshop Elements 2025, and you need to be in a relatively recent version. What we need is the button here for create a new group. So select this top layer, hold the shift key down, come down to the black and white layer, click on the new group button right here, puts all that into a group. I'll just expand that group so you can see it. Let's now do another adjustment layer up here. Layer, new adjustment layer and levels. Same thing again this time. Do not check that checkbox, choose okay. But notice that the layer is in here inside the group. What you want to do is you want to take this and drag it above the group like that. So it's outside of this group. I don't want to have this acting on the back image. So we need to make a clipping mask of this into this group. So over here where it says levels, right click on this and create clipping mask, little indent right there. This is now working on the group. So everything in here is being adjusted, but the background is not. And that's what you want. Now double click on the thumbnail, brings the adjustment back up. We still have a nice range in here. 
Now I can grab this left side, bring that in just a little bit, that richness of color is up. I can take my middle color in here and go to the right. And now we're getting into some darker colors. So I can use these to come in, kind of balance out to get the values that I want. Now I'm looking over here at this color and eyeballing it over here. And that's the part that I'm saying take some art because we can't get an exact color because there are lots of different colors in here, a whole huge range, almost a black over here, clear to white over here. So I'm just picking an area that's kind of a mid-tone and I'm going for that mid-tone value. So somewhere right around in here maybe, you know, a little less on that black. If you go too far in the black, it begins to block up back in here. You don't want that. And I think that's looking pretty good. But notice as I do this, I'm getting more saturation this time as opposed to less saturation. So the saturation is now working in the opposite direction for us. So what I need to do again is to bring down the saturation. So I'll put this right about here for my color. I think that's pretty good. Let's do the same thing again. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Don't check that checkbox, choose okay. This should come in above everything else and it does. Go to the right hand side here, right click on this and create clipping mask. That locks it in again. I can now bring my saturation down a little bit, just like that, just a touch, just knock off that fluorescent edge like that. And again, just eyeballing it. And I think now I have a pretty good looking color in here for the shoe that looks to my eye like this color over here. Again, it's not gonna be an exact match because we have all of these different values in here. But if you're just trying to get the right look, this would be very, very close. If I was working on just a square solid color area, just a like a logo with a solid color, this would be real accurate. But since it's not a solid color logo, we have a whole range in here. It's a very close approximation. That's about the best you can do on this. But you can always come back in, double click on the adjustment layer, and then you can tweak the layer a little bit and try to get it exactly where you want it. That's always gonna be going towards the color that we have here because that's the color we're basing everything on. So you're not gonna be getting away from the actual color. It's really a question of the values they have to work with. And I think that looks real natural right there. Let's see how we did. I'll come down here to the background layer, right click, make a duplicate of that layer. I'll drag it up on top. So here's the original and here's our new green color, original and green color. And I think that's pretty accurate. Now we used a lot of these layers in here, adjustment layers and so forth. I kind of touched on them a bit. I didn't go into detail on how all these things work. If you want all that detail on these tools, the best way to get that is with my HTG Photo Coach program for Photoshop Elements, where I have step-by-step -step instructions on how to use every single tool, panel, menu inside of Photoshop Elements and a lot more as well. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you found this video useful, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that now. That way you won't lose this channel in the future. And I'll see you next time.